So you're making a strategy game and reach a point in where you can just live without this. It's fog of war, the unexplored regions of a map that could contain resources or enemies, a must for any strategy game. So okay, we want to make one. If your game is in 2D, then you are in luck, it's very easy to make fog of war for 2D games. Now, if you are making a 3D game, you're going to need a little more finesse. It's not that simple to do fog of war in 3D, for many different reasons. We'll be doing this in Godot for a 3D project, but the information present here will also assist you in other game engines as well, especially the bits on design approaches to it. So let's go through this. First thing, this is Fog of War, done in RTS, the Arc Colony, a 2D game. All your units have a given view range. Whenever they move, they will start to expand the explorable areas, solving the fog and allowing you to see the map. Enemy units will only be visible inside that active view range, so they can sneak up on you if you don't keep a constant patrol of units or some scouts. With the thicker fog, there is a secondary layer, a thinner, less denser fog, which allows you to still see some important units on the map. These are common attributes for a fog of war system in a strategy game. The reason they are essential is because they allow you to play the element of surprise. You don't know where the enemy is coming from and you don't know where everything is. So scouting areas and creating strategies for how you are going to approach a given map is also part of the fun of playing strategy games. It seems pretty easy in theory. Now, how the heck do you implement this in your game engine? The simplest solution for a fog of war system is by using a tile set of low resolution fog like sprites upscaled to match the resolution of your game. I have done that in a previous project. But the best way to do this is by using shaders. If you've never heard of shaders, they are basically code done that will change what you are seeing on the screen. Think about it as effects programs. A shader done for fog of war would work like filling the screen with black pixels then erasing parts of that as units move around, while still keeping that thinner layer below it to display already explorable areas or units. So why did earlier I say that making Fog of War for 2D games was easier? Well, 2D games don't have depth or perspective like 3D games do. So for 2D it's just a matter of putting this shader or fog tile set map on top of your game, like layering above everything else besides the UI, and that's done. Now for 3D games, you cannot just overlay on top. How does even that work? It doesn't. You need to find a way to blend that unit 2D fog into the 3D environment in a nicer way. So let's take a look at a 3D RTS game to get some ideas. So let's take a look at... Age of Empires 3. And yes, I'm running the classic version, not the remastered one. Here I just made a simple map to just test how the fog works. So let's run the map and see what this is all about. As you can see, here's the fog of war. Notice how it looks like it's part of the terrain texture. Let's take a note of that. The fog of war looks like a terrain texture. Mm. Notice the fog dissolving as we move through it. Looks like it has some structure to it. It doesn't dissolve organically or pixel perfectly. Let's keep walking. Noticing that the tree just popped visible. Interesting. So we are starting to get how this works in Age of Empires 3. Objects will stay hidden until they are visible inside that area that is exploring the fog of war. Then they will pop up on the screen. Now if we move our camera around, you can see that there is the silhouette of a terrain cliff here which reinforces the idea that the map terrain has fog of war as part of its texture. So this silhouette you're seeing is the 3D mesh that was yet not revealed by the fog of war. That fog of war texture is probably using a shader to do this. And here's a building, just like the tree. You can say it stays visible on the thinnest part of the fog. So. The fog of war seems to be part of the map terrain texture. The fog has some structure and it dissolves in steps. Objects will start hidden and appear when visible from the fog of war. Some objects will be remembered from the last time they were visible. 
So this gives some ideas to us of how we can implement a fog of war system for a 3D game. Now all you have to do is to problem solve different solutions for all of those points and you are going to have a fog of war system. So let's see a way to actually implement this inside Godot. The first one is dissolving fog, which will be done with a shader. We'll need to grab our unit's position from the 3D world and translate them to the texture inside a shader. So then we can dissolve that texture using the 2D coordinates. And we can dissolve by using a, another sprite to just turn the black portions of the texture white. So then we can later use the shader to post as transparent. Nice. Then we are going to need that fog of our texture to be part of the terrain texture that also we can do with a shader for the terrain mesh this time. Probably want to apply this in the same shader as the terrain shader. So say that if we want to do a mixed terrain shader textures like I did in the previous tutorial, we can add this on top of it. This will help us in you know, avoiding an extra draw call, which is just to put the fog of war texture on top of it. Fog structure dissolving probably comes from a pixel image stretched to the whole map. So whenever we review another pixel of the fog of war, we are going to see a small square being revealed on the fog of war system. Probably it is a low res to improve performance. <laughs> okay. And also objects should stay hidden at first, then only appear when visible for the fog of war, which we can do with areas 3D so we can detect when units are inside of it, turning them visible. Pretty simple. For objects to be saved under the thinner layer of the fog of war, we can check whenever they are out of the 3D areas of the exploration of the units. Then we can create a dummy object to just show the player a preview of what there was in the last time. And whenever we explore the dummy object, we simply clear it. The real object should be underneath it. And if it was destroyed, like let's just say a building, you're going to see a destroyed building graphics and the dummy object can be cleared. And because the building is destroyed, we don't need to create another dummy object. That has to be done through the logic of our game. Okay, we're getting somewhere now, but there's still some technical sides to sort out. But with this, we already have a somewhat plan of what we are going to do. So on the second part, we are going to worry more about implementation inside Godot. So that concludes our game design, if you call it, of the Fog of War system. And in the next parts, we are going to implement that inside Godot. So I'll see you guys on the next part. Thank you guys for watching and as always, post your comments if you have any questions or suggestions, like the video if you found it useful and subscribe to the channel to see more content, going to help our channel grow a lot. Hope you like this video and watch out for the next parts.